So we're here 10 minutes before the uh, Canada-Croatia match. And let me tell you the truth about Qatar. I've been to Qatar more than 10 times in the last 12 years. I've spoken to hundreds of migrant workers in Qatar. Here's the truth. All these uh, hypocritical uh, complaints by especially the UK, but also by all European Western countries, those critics those criticizing Qatar. Qatar has paid over 100 billion dollars to over 100 million people from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Philippines. These guys, over 10 million of them, have been able to work in Qatar and earn 10 times more than what they make in their home countries. 10 times more. Of course it's dangerous to work in Qatar in 50 degrees Celsius. Of course it's dangerous, but do you think it's safe to work for two dollars a day in Pakistan or for one dollar a day in India? Do you think that's safer? They've been making ten times more money in Qatar. So of course they're all happy to have been able to go to Qatar. And when you talk about, you know, they've, they've been talking about a certain amount of people dying. The thing is, if you have three million migrants, Sadly, some of them are going to die, then, and it's, it, there will be more people dying if they w had stayed in India or Pakistan, okay? So that's just a little bit of a weird thing. You know, when Denmark complains, why didn't Denmark send them money? Like Switzerland, sw rich countries complaining about Qatar. Why have they not sent one dollar to help those people? Why are they not inviting Pakistanis to come to Switzerland and work? Why are they not inviting Indian people to come to Denmark and work? No, they're not. They're just complaining about Qatar. Qatar is a tiny little country, it's so small. And if everybody in Europe was helping India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and if everybody in Europe was helping the Philippines and helping all these countries in the same proportion as Qatar, can you imagine? There wouldn't be poor people there anymore. Qatar is only 300,000 people. They've helped over 100 million people. If you include the 10 million migrant workers over the last 12 years, 10 million. Okay, they've helped those 10 million, but those 10 million, the money they've gotten is to help more than 10 people each in their families, their cousins, their parents, their wives, their children back in the home countries. So it's uh, okay. So uh, that's just a little, little detail. And, um, you know, uh, when you, when you compare, like, you know, like when you talk about, okay, let me stand over here. Let's see how it works. Looks when you're there. Uh, so when you when you talk about you know the corruption in FIFA, uh, you know I'm from Switzerland and I I think I understand what FIFA is about. FIFA is about 200 countries. It's not about England. It's not about the USA. It's not about dozen or so Western countries. It's about every country in the world. So obviously, every football association in every country wants to have support in their countries. The, the countries in Africa want to have support. They want, you know, they want to have hundreds of millions or billions of dollars. You call that corruption? No, I call that, you know, like common sense. Why isn't Denmark sending them money? Why isn't the U.S. sending them anything? Not even one dollar. The U.S. is not helping anyone in Africa to build stadiums. Half of the stadiums in Qatar, are, the materials are going to be sent to Africa to build stadiums for them for free in Africa. These countries in Africa have gotten hundreds of millions of dollars. Obviously, they got it as an in, in, incitement, incitement to, to have those countries vote for them through the FIFA to get the World Cup, obviously. But what do you expect? Like, these English people who are complaining all the time, you know, the Premier League is the most corrupt football organization in the world. The Premier League teams are billions of dollars in debt. Is that okay? The, the Premier League teams, Chelsea was just sold by an, a Russian oligarch to some American oligarch for more money than it cost to build all these eight stadiums in Qatar. So what do you think is more valuable? Eight stadiums in Qatar or one football team in the Premier League? Hey, I, I think people need to wake up. It's just like common sense. So as far as I've seen, I, I watch all the matches. The, the World Cup is probably the best World Cup ever. Uh, this one that's happening right now. Uh, I hope there won't be some scandals with the VAR and stuff like that. But so far it's, I mean, there's like a few things like Cristiano Ronaldo, which just like comedy, just falling and they give him penalty and there's a VAR and I don't understand how they cannot cancel that, that penalty. That's it's just basic stuff like that. There's a couple other things like that. I think even Canada was cheated uh, or stuff like that. So 
uh, this is just common sense. Uh, thanks for watching. You know, the, when I watch all these, those smart ass people to, uh, criticizing Qatar, of course, the, the, there were a lot of problems. Of course, there were some problems. But you know how it got fixed? Because of the World Cup. You know, now the, the working conditions are better, the pay is higher. You know, all these migrant workers, the hundreds that I've spoken to over the last 12 years, they were always happy. They were always, of course, they were saying it's hard work, especially in the summer, it's crazy hard work. But there are fewer migrants in the summer in Qatar. There are more in the winter months. Uh, so, so now things are even better. And I wish that Europe, Europe would like, you know, open up the same way like Qatar and give all those migrant workers visas to come to Europe and do work in Europe. Why not? Instead of complaining about Qatar, do the same in Europe. Invite those migrant workers to be able to make a living so they don't have to live in $1 per day back in their home countries. You know, that'd be a minimum. All right. And uh, yeah, uh, one thing to mention, of course, you know, Qatar is stinking rich, crazy rich. Top three gas reserves in the world. Number one is Russia. So that's, you can maybe think why some things are happening around there. Number two is Iran, you know, who might be interested in instigating something there, huh? like some kind of demonstrations and stuff. Number three is Qatar. So Qatar has the, uh, the biggest U.S. Uh, a military base in the whole region. So I would think they're probably like, I'm not going to go into too much into politics, but it, it's just, you know, you have to think. Like they are so far in front of all the other gas reserves in the world. And gas is the most expensive commodity right now. So think about that also when people talk about all these countries. Thanks for watching.